What's up, fellow movie busts and film connoisseurs? It is your self-proclaimed cinema show in here. And damn you, Marvel. Gosh darn you, Marvel. You managed to give me absolutely nothing, yet you still had me sitting here clamoring for more. And what do I mean by they gave us absolutely nothing? I mean that the Loki series literally gave us nothing. Literally nothing happened throughout the Loki series, and literally the finale of Loki was absolutely nothing. I sat here for a day, for a whole entire 24 hours, trying to figure out how do I review this episode. Because this episode is nothing but long drawn out conversations and exposition dumps. And how can I really critique that? Now I know most of your favorite movie reviewers that you love to watch so much, they don't really review these TV shows, they don't really review movies. What they do is scene for scene breakdowns. So basically you click on their videos and they sit here and talk to you for 45 minutes about what happened in the episode without giving you actual opinions about how they felt about what happened in the episode. So that's what a lot of your favorite movie and TV show reviewers do. So I need you to pay attention to that. And I'm not that type of person. I want to give my honest opinions on things. But when there's something like a show like Loki and the series finale where literally nothing is happening for me to even give my opinion on, like all I can say is that this series finale was very lackluster. It was very underwhelming. I felt like we got no payoff to a show that was nothing but build up for this last moment. It just led us into more build up. Um, literally, I'm struggling even right now as recording this to figure out what to really say about it because there's nothing to say about it. There was a lot of conversations going on. I thought the beginning of the episode was kind of stupid when the female Loki was kind of scared to open the door and go through the door. like. What was all of that about? You're supposed to be this badass Loki, yet she was afraid in that moment. And then it just goes from that moment into just 38 minutes worth of talking. 38 minutes worth of talking that did lead, lead up and set up something interesting. I'm not going to lie. That's why I said you gave me absolutely nothing, yet I'm still excited to see more. And I find that as a problem. Like I don't want to just be excited to see more. I want to be happy with what I got as well. But literally, it's nothing there. There's no substance to this show. This complete series has been, I don't want to say a waste of time because it did set up, I guess, the multiverse. But as far as the Loki show, I felt like they could have did this in a different way. There was no re real need to bring Loki into the situation. Um, the only thing I could really talk about in this episode was the introduction to Kang. But I want to make a whole separate video on that. Because when it comes to MCU villains, I got a lot to say. I got a lot to say about this Kang as well. But let me just briefly give you my feelings about it. I felt like this Kang was interesting. It was an interesting character if it was a different character. But it being Kang, this is not Kang that I know from the comics. This isn't the Kang that I'm used to. And seeing Kang act like this was pretty disappointing. Now I know that there's going to be other variants of Kang that are more evil. But for a, uh, what do they say? What's the famous saying? Um, huh, why, why can't it come to my mind? First impressions, all right? First impressions mean a lot, okay? And my first impression of the MCU Kang is that he's lame, bubbling, fool. Like, he's just a quirky, weird, wizardy type of character, and that's not Kang at all. So my first introduction to him, it was kind of aggravating. Don't get me wrong, I've listened to the things he said. And he, like I said, he was somewhat of an interesting character if he was someone else. But he's not. He's Kang. And I just didn't really appreciate that aspect of how they treated Kang in this episode. I know we're going to get other Kangs, but think back to that first moment when you were introduced to Thanos in the MCU. And what that meant to you. And how intimidating that was when he turned around and it's Thanos in the throne. Like, oh shit, things are about to go down. Whereas our first introduction to Kang is like, what is this crap? And I know people who don't read the comics have no idea what's going on, but this Kang is just weird. And it's just, like I'm sitting here and I usually have things to say, but what can I say? Do you really want me to sit here and talk to you for 30 minutes about other people's conversations? I mean, there was a scene between Mobius where Mobius gets kicked to the ground by some woman and she goes off to handle her business. There's nothing happening in this show. And I see so many people online saying, oh, this is the best thing ever. This is the best thing smoking. But it's not. There's really nothing happening in this episode for me to even review other than, hey, this conversation was a conversation. That conversation, that was pretty conversation-y. Oh, this exposition dump, 
That was a lot of exposition. This explanation? Huh, that was a cool explanation. There's literally no action, nothing. The little fight that happens between female Loki and Loki, or female Loki, of course, best Loki. I mean, that was the lamest fight in MCU history. There was no stakes there. No one needed that moment where you get up and have a little jousting sword fight between Lokis. That's lame. It was completely lame. I'm getting tired of this dagger Loki in the series where Loki's like this little knight who doesn't have any other powers other than to fight, you know, with a little dagger. Like, <laughs> like three musketeers. It's fucking lame. I'm so tired of that. I am so tired of that. We have the most, one of the most powerful characters in the MCU, and all he is is, I'm God. I'm God. Yes, I'm used to the action figure for My Hero Academia, which is actually a good superhero show which is better than anything the MCU is putting out. I mean, this is the Loki season finale. Hung God! Hung God! Oh, you want to have a 45-minute conversation about something that absolutely doesn't matter? Cool, let's conversate. Oh, wait, hold on. Hung God! Hung God! All right, let's talk about some other shit that doesn't matter. That's what Loki is. Oh, my freaking God. I'm getting frustrated trying to film this review because what do you want me to review? What happens in this show? I'm starting to regret the fact that Marvel is even making TV shows because the Netflix shows were so much better. Kang serves no purpose. We get to the, fin the finale of this fucking season, and you see this castle, and you think, oh, something's about to go down. Maybe we could have had a little fight between Kang and Loki's. No, nothing. Nothing happened. But it did end with a cool setup. It ended with a cool setup. Well, first, we had... We get this awkward... Kiss, which some people are is like, is it masturbation if you fuck yourself? Because, I mean, Loki is kind of like making out with himself. So it's weird. It's weird. It doesn't fit. Their whole romantic thing they've been trying to pull between Loki and Sylvie, the female Loki, it has not worked at all. I believe that the female Loki, her acting abilities are pretty garbage. Yes, I said it. Sylvie, or I, I keep calling her Sophie. I think her name is Sylvie. Who cares? The character freaking sucks. It's a one-note character that's just there to be more powerful than our Loki. There's nothing cool about this Loki other than, oh, it's a female and it's more powerful than our Loki. So that's basically all you get. There's a kiss scene in this episode, which is totally awkward. And then even in the moment, you're like, hey, is this like a passionate kiss? Or does she just pull like a move where, hey, I'm going to kiss you and you're such a stupid male that you're falling head over heels in this kiss and I'm going to push you through a portal. That's kind of what it is. So even though, like, I guess they try to make it seem romantic or something, it's still conniving. It's a conniving bitch move. This female basically using her sex appeal to con Loki. That's what this was. And you could try to spin it in whatever way you want to, but that's what it was. It was just this female Loki use her sex appeal. I'm going to kiss you right quick, and you're not going to think about anything, and I'm going to push you through, through this portal. And that's the end of the episode. And then she kills Kang. After all of this exposition about why you shouldn't kill him, she kills him. So I just felt like we could have dealt with maybe not 35 minutes of talking and maybe could just let Sylvie kill Kang a little bit earlier maybe so we could get a little bit more happening in this episode. But no. And then when he goes to the portal, he goes to the portal, now he's back in the TVA. You're like, okay, well, what is he going to do? Then you notice that the TVA isn't acting like the TVA in our universe. Like, they're still handling, like, they're going about the regular precautions. They're going through the regular drills. So when they see all these lines, you know, the multiverse lines going all crazy, they're getting ready to prepare to go fight all these different multiverses, you know? They're ready to prune whoever comes in their path. And then you're basically left at square one again, where Loki's meeting Mobius, and Mobius thinks it's for the first time. And you're just back at square one again, from the beginning, where Loki's back in the TVA. The TVA has no knowledge of what just happened, so you're really just in a time loop right back to the beginning of the series. But you do get a look at Kang, the Conqueror, I guess, the statue. So you know that Kang conquered this universe. The more I think about it, Sylvie killing Kang in that moment it's kind of like what Star-Lord did in Infinity War when he pistol whipped Thanos and woke Thanos up. That's kind of what I view this moment as, like the definitive moment where a character in the MCU totally f***ed up and you're about to cause mass destruction. But yeah, for the most part, there's not much to say. I feel like, I understand there's going to be a season two. Now, when I saw that there's going to be a season two, 
it made me forgive a lot of the problems in Loki a little bit. It made me be more forgiving towards those issues because yeah, you can resolve a lot of these issues in a second season. But a good show, a good show finds a way to wrap up, you know, to somewhat wrap up a little bit of the storylines that they got going on while opening up new paths for new storylines going forward. Whereas this show wraps up nothing. It just leaves a bunch of loose ends and a bunch of questions going on into season two. And honestly, the way that these MCU shows have been so far, I'm not really confident that season two will give us answers either. For the most part, these MCU shows to me have been, although maybe somewhat enjoyable, they've been somewhat pointless. They've led nowhere. A lot of, like for one, Loki show, it did lead to the multiverse and different things like that, but nothing happened. There was no substance within the show. It was just a big trailer towards, hey, our big explanation as to how the multiverse opened up. You don't really get no time to spend with Loki. I would even argue that the Loki in this show is totally different from the Loki that we know in the MCU. Like, this isn't 2012 Loki from Avengers for damn sure. And this isn't the Loki that we saw in Endgame get killed by Thanos. Or Infinity, yeah, whichever one. Regardless, this isn't Loki. This Loki has been acting however he wants to act. It hasn't been Loki-ish at all. We haven't had any really Loki moments in this show. He's been demeaned. He's been diminished. He's been demasculinized throughout this entire series. And then you want me to come for season two and to watch this happen again? Or in season two, will Loki get his nuts up? Because right now, at least right now, it looks like, oh, maybe in season two, Loki gets his nuts up, starts doing some manly shit, and starts, you know, solving some of these issues and handling himself in a better way instead of following around Sylvie like a rag doll. The best part of this show was literally when Kang says that Loki is like but a flea on the dragon's neck. And that's what Loki was. He was a pestering little flea in this series. Like everyone else has got something going on. And Loki, you're basically just tagging around. You're tagging around like a sad puppy. And they even called it out in the end of the show. So there's some self-awareness there. There's some self-awareness that Loki has been reduced to a flea on a dragon's neck or a dog's neck or whoever's neck in this show. But like I said earlier, a good show can wrap up different storylines. We get no storylines wrapped here. I know a lot of us was hoping for a Mobius moment where Mobius gets to ride a jet ski. You're not getting that in this season. Although I do believe we'll get it eventually. I do believe that we'll get it eventually, but you're not going to get it in this season. So season two is coming. And like I said, it makes me forgive a lot of the problems in season one. But I can't help but feel like maybe season two is just going to be a whole bunch of nothing either. Because WandaVision... Although you thought that it had stakes, although you thought that the things that Wanda was doing in that show were going to change the Marvel Universe, it ultimately led to nothing. But I won't complain about WandaVision because WandaVision did what it was supposed to do in as it was a series that focused on the characters. Wanda and Vision are, you could say, side characters in the MCU. They don't get focused like Iron Man and Captain America and these different heroes. So you got to spend time with these characters, get to know Wanda and Vision better. And I like that. Falcon and the Winter Soldier was supposed to be that, but instead they ditched Falcon and the Winter Soldier and focused on Carly that whole season. Loki was supposed to be a Loki show. You're supposed to get to know more about Loki, maybe even the 2012 Loki, the more evil Loki. But no, it was all about Sylvie. So going forward, I have to believe that Loki season two is probably just going to be another Sylvie story. So my excitement for it isn't really there. The only ex excitement that I get from this series is the setup of Kang. And I could even argue that they did that wrong because this Kang in this show was completely lame. It was not Kang. It was not Kang, but I know we're getting different variants, but damn, first impressions mean a lot. And just when I think back, maybe five or six years from now, when there's a new Avengers movie and the big bad, bad of that movie is Kang and they're fighting Kang, I'm going to think back to the introduction of Kang and be like, man, that was pretty lame. But yeah, all in all, the Loki series was a disappointment. 
The Loki season finale was a complete disappointment. It set up a bunch of interesting things that I am hype about. Like I said at the beginning of this review, the game is absolutely nothing, yet I'm clamoring for more. I am clamoring for a Loki season two because I want to see where the story goes. I want to see what happens to Loki. I want to see what happens to Mobius. I hope Sylvie dies. I don't want to see any more of her character. I'm interested to see where they take Kang, but I'm going to do a whole separate video on Kang because I got a lot a lot of feelings about that and I didn't want this whole review to be me critiquing the introduction of Kang although that's basically what the season finale was but all in all season finale is a disappointment disappointment series is a disappointment but I don't know what you guys think let me know down in the comments below did you like the series did you like the final episode let me know all that down in the comments below while you're down there hit that thumbs up button hit that subscribe button and as always find some time out of your day to go watch a movie